Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith. And this is all things Tenerife and more. I'm in Dublin, my hometown. I'm down at St. Patrick's Cathedral, which is on every tourist map in the city. And it's definitely one that you should visit when you're here in the city. St. Patrick's Cathedral, Christ Church Cathedral are probably the two most iconic cathedrals. There is a third one called the Pro Cathedral, which is on the north side of the city. The poor relation of these two and uh, definitely worth seeing. This park beside the cathedral, believe it or not, there's actually a river running underneath us at the moment. There's a subterranean river that runs from here to the Liffey. Now, I always get this wrong. River Puddle, I think it's the River Puddle, runs underneath there. This cathedral was built on the split of the river. Now, St. Patrick's Cathedral, famous for many a thing, and probably the most famous thing it's, most the thing it's most famous for, is the Dean of St. Patrick was Jonathan Swift, I should have said Jonathan Swift at one stage was the Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral, uh, the man who wrote Gulliver's Travels. And he wrote it here in Dublin. It was written here in Dublin City. Uh, during the summer, actually, these little archways, there's a market. The market stalls are on each of these little archways. Always worth looking out for. Uh, you'll get it online after looking for markets in Dublin. It comes up. Normally, as I said, it's normally summertime. And uh, we're only in, I suppose, we're, we're in April at the moment, so not quite summer in Dublin. But definitely worth a look if, it, if you do happen to be in Dublin around that in sort of June, July, August. It's worth a look. You get a lot of artisan, bakers, candle makers, jewellery, that sort of thing. So, these houses on this corner, I'll show you some of the frescoes outside which depict scenes from Gulliver's Travels. <coughs> Again, relating to as I said, the Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral. So to those of you not familiar with Gulliver's Travels, Gulliver was a giant in the Laputian in a land and he was a little person in another land. So as you can see from these frescoes, they show him as the giant fabulous book and definitely one worth reading to the children if not for yourself but it's, it's on those I suppose top 100 books to read the Radisson Blue Hotel I won't say mid-range because it's not a little bit more expensive than some that you can get in Dublin but honestly I don't think there's a cheap hotel in Dublin even the cheap ones, I suppose the cheap, one of the cheapest places you can stay in Dublin City and it's well worth looking into, <clears throat> but you will have to look into it in advance and not a huge amount of people know about it, bizarrely, is Trinity College. Trinity College rents out the student rooms during the summer. So when the students aren't in and they're going back home, they rent out their rooms. And normally they go for about 95 euro or thereabouts for a room for the night which considering where you are at the bottom of Grafton Street just beside O'Connell Street <coughs> smack bang in the middle of the city and you're staying in what, just such a beautifully iconic building so yeah if you're looking for somewhere cheap try it out as opposed to going so hard to think, huh? okay let me tell you places to avoid if you're going to stay in Dublin City Gardner Street. There are hotels, bed and breakfast guest houses along that area. They're old Georgian houses, converted to old Georgian houses. And back in the day, they were fairly decent and they would have been reasonably priced. Nowadays, as I said, you probably won't get one for less than 120, 130 euros a night. And the area itself is not a good area. So I wouldn't be recommending it for tourists. Absolutely not. If you're, I suppose, People 
do stay in it. It's always busy. Nowadays, it's probably more homeless people living in them. Because the Irish government has a solution to uh, lack of housing. They're putting people into uh, bed and breakfast accommodation and into hotel accommodation, which is not ideal, particularly when people have children. But uh, it's their solution at the moment. So as a result, a lot of them have been taken over for that purpose, which still leaves a huge amount of hotels in Dublin City because every time you look, there's a new hotel has appeared. Uh, in my wandering around today, I've probably passed about half a dozen new hotels that I haven't, that are literally up in the last four or five years. There's one straight away in front of me, the Premier Inn. Location wise, couldn't ask for better. You've got Grafton Street just ahead of us. Well, not Grafton Street, but if you go down that street that we're looking at, past the Hairy Lemon, uh, it's a pub, not a person. Well, actually, it was a person. That particular pub, it's yellow, you can't miss it. It's just down there on the left hand side. That pub was named after an old, a, a down and out in Dublin City. It was an old man called the Hairy Lemon whose head was misshapen which had warts on it and he had a beard but a bald head so he looked like a hairy lemon and the bars have been named after him he was an iconic individual him and there was another guy again back in the 1920s 1930s called bang bang who had been scarred apparently from post-traumatic stress from the war and went around with a key, a big Jeez. old silver or steel key in his hand, pretending to shoot people, shouting bang bang, which is the reason why they call him bang bang. And uh, yeah, so Harry Lemon was named after him. Bang bang. There is actually a monument to him, it was re recently unveiled. So, Hogan's Bar, fantastic. If you want a nice little Irish bar, that's not a traditional diddly eye Irish bar, there's a difference, okay? Hogan's Bar is an Irish bar. The long hall, straight across there, you'll see the awning, the looks candy stripe. That's a proper Irish bar. Not traditional Irish music, for any stretch of the imagination, but it is an Irish bar. Let me have a look and see what we have down here. Okay. Fade Street Social down there the red awning that's a nice nice restaurant owned by an irish chef celebrity chef it's called dylan mcgrath he was one of the chefs on the irish celebrity chef type thing what was it uh, master chef he was one of the judges on that he owns that and he owns the rustic stone which is just down here on the right hand side two restaurants belong to him next next to each other chelsea drugstore great little spot So this is Georgia Street, Brasserie 66. Again, beautiful restaurant, have eaten in it. Now, and I tell you now, none of these are cheap. You don't get, you do get the, some cheap restaurants in Dublin, but you have to go outside the city to get them. Uh, this is the George's Arcade. Okay, you want a cheap restaurant? This is Alan's. That's a cracking little spot. If you want something cheap and cheerful, you want a snack wandering around the city, Alan's is the place to go. Alan's an old friend of mine when I used to work around the city. Uh, but this is the arcade. I've always liked it. It's all sort of full of artisan foods, jewelry, for quirky t-shirts. Great spot for vegan food. There's a restaurant that was very top as we walked in. I should have thought stopped here. So this is off George's Street, George's Arcade, and it's just at the back of Grafton Street. The building you have in front of us is the... God, my brain has just gone completely blank. It'll come to me as I get closer to it, probably because I'll see this, so I'll read the sign. <laughs> Smoking Bones, again, that's the second one it is in Dublin. 
nice restaurant if you're looking for decent ribs definitely the place to go castle lounge always busy these restaurants are always busy gourmet kitchen build your own burger in there Paros Court Townhouse there you go how can I forget the name of it Paros Court Townhouse this we'll finish in here actually no shortage Alfie's nice little place good food nice little bar in there as well actually no I know where we're gonna stop there's always fantastic statues as I said in Dublin Dublin's great history attached to it most iconic I suppose song in Dublin is Molly Malone Dublin's fair city so Molly for some unknown reason has ended up on the south side of the city so one of my earlier vlogs on Dublin you'll see we were over on the north side we we're in O'Connell Street now just off O'Connell Street there is a place called Moore Street an old market area an old market street and that's where Molly Malone would have played her trade for want of a better word it's where she would have uh, sold her wares international bar I was in there last weekend really good bar myself and my partner went in there for a few beers before we went out out, out. <laughs> sounds like a Scotsman there before we went out for dinner uh, and actually we ate in this little restaurant over here the red torch ginger and actually I'll sneak it in I took some footage of what we ate <laughs> course meal for 30 just under 30 euros uh, food's amazing staff are fantastic only drawback is it the only do bottle beer oh, was a downside but the food 10 out of 10 can't complain where else Salamanca fantastic and again if you want to go really high-end in Dublin City there's only one place Trocadero let's have a little look at the menu uh, if you want to go to the truck you need to book in advance there's no question about that and as you can see from the menus remains are about 30 odd euros it's not cheap but it is beautiful uh, a lot of celebrities like to eat in it there's always find some someone you may not recognize them but from an Irish point of view they would be celebrities in there now Molly our beautiful Molly who should be on the north side of the city they decided to put her over here so this is the iconic Molly Malone now Molly has some outstanding attributes that most people as you can see from what's happening to the poor girl at the moment uh, you can understand why certain parts of her are shiny for some strange and unknown reason tourists just happen to grab her from that particular point Sorry. <laughs> so this is Molly she's in the wrong place now the history behind Molly Malone is Molly Malone was actually a prostitute she wasn't actually a market seller that's not what she did if you listen to the song the sounds of the undertones of what it actually was about Molly died of a fever it was it was a venereal disease she died of but it's ironic that now because of this she's actually got not poor girl gets attacked even when she's in her in a statue form but this is Molly Malone so I'm gonna stop it there if you like what you see hit the like subscribe and the bell for notification talk to you soon take care